welcome to a cornucopia of tales and tellers. I'm Simona and this week we've got a very special episode that we've been postponing for quite a while now for various reasons. Because this summer I went to my first storytelling festival. I was in the UK and I went to the Oxford Storytelling Festival and I wanted to talk to you about my experiences uh, and uh, what I liked about it, uh, what uh, I learned from it. But uh, I, I'm not the only one you're going to hear the voice uh, and the thoughts of uh, during this episode, uh, because uh, I asked uh, uh, David Heathfield, who was at the festival with me and who actually was the one who invited me to the festival and who performed at the festival, to share his thoughts uh, on some points. And uh, I also asked uh, two people who I met at the Oxford Storytelling Festival. Their names uh, are David and Matt and uh, they are storytellers uh, and uh, story makers. Uh, I really hope that uh, one day we'll get them uh, on the podcast uh, because I'd really like for everybody to get to know them because they're just fantastic. Uh, but I don't want to spoil too much. Uh, I, I really hope that uh, sometime soon uh, we'll be able to invite them and uh, do an episode with the two of them. Uh, so that you can get to know them uh, as I did. But before I begin, I'd like to put in a note about the organization of the podcast, because uh, when I had the idea of doing an episode about the Oxford Storytelling Festival, I thought of some points uh, that I could ask the people to address uh, in their recordings. And... Uh, David uh, and Matt, uh, they tell stories together, they make up stories together and uh, it made sense for them to have a conversation about those points. Uh, so at the beginning of the podcast, uh, you're going to hear the two of them uh, talking uh, about uh, them in their conversation and then uh, you're going to hear my ideas uh, and uh, David Heathfield's ideas uh, about uh, the Oxford Storytelling Festival. So, without further ado, Oxford Storytelling Festival, a conversation by Matt and David. Well, Matt, this was our first time going and my little mind was blown, I have to admit. All those different storytellers, all those different styles, all those different little places and big places where stories were being told. It was quite astonishing for me. Mm. Yeah. Uh, really good quality of storytellers. Um, lots going on. Great variety. Beautiful setting. Water Perry is stunning and like there's such a kind of focus on the the connection with nature for that site, um, as well as very much that from the participants. Um, yeah, it was it was a very kind of cohesive, clever, all in one place and event, right? Yeah, I I, I felt looked after. Um, I like everything was organised and the food was good. Um, oh. Yeah, enjoyed that. Um, so I, I mean, I, I, I saw, I think actually my big takeaway was the huge variety of ways of telling a story because you and I Matt, have been telling stories in our way, kind of separate from this community in this world and this scene. And so there was people like Dave Rock who gave this incredibly impassioned, intensely personal, almost sort of revelatory and, and uh, 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 kind of story, just narrating his own life. And then there were yeah. these really polished performers. And we went to see Nick Hennessy on the last night, who was so smooth and impressive and slick, right? Yeah, very. Um, 
especially with all the technology. But the overall effect of the story, I really enjoyed. Um, I, 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 yeah, the 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 sound and the storytelling. Um, I, I'm trying to describe the, the sound effects that he used, but they were all um, him creating them uh, with his voice, and then using was it what do they call that playback looping or something to. Yeah, sampling. Anyway, or something. It was it was a, what, an amazing effect. And yeah. and then there was, I mean, someone who I just fell in love with was this guy Tom Herons, who was so I found him so open and so friendly in himself. He seemed so mm. comfortable in his own skin. Just just he was sort of nattering. And but what he was nattering about was the most beautifully constructed, beautifully delivered story for a group of people, I can imagine. Um, it was a real delight just sort of sitting on a hay bale and listening to him listening to him yeah. tell his tale. Yeah. That was that was a great story. I really enjoyed that. Um, and there were also little one-on-one moments. So I loved meeting this guy called Norman Perrin, who seems to be well known in the scene. As I say, this is such a first time for me but he was this just totally charming um uh, uh canadian i he reminded me i hope no one would not mind me saying reminded me of a of a gnome with his little cultured beard and his glasses and his hat and i found him very knowledgeable and fascinating and we'd stopped and we just talked about story and stories and it was yeah it was such a wonderful meeting Nice. Yeah, Norman was a great guy. I think for me, my um, there's no one person who um, comes to mind, just a collection of people. You know, where people I spoke to while standing in the dinner queue or uh, outside of a workshop, and then um, and at, at the dinner table as well. Um, and storytellers, just converse, short conversations here and there. Um, there was a warmth, um, wasn't there? Yeah. Like ev- everywhere you went, it was everyone was open for a chat and happy right. to take a moment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was lovely. Tracy Chipman, I really enjoyed. Uh, she told she told a story. I was uh, the session. I think was called Witch. Um, anyway, she told. Uh, I really enjoyed the story. We, we're, we're actually having this conversation sort of a few weeks a few weeks after the festival. So I don't remember all the details of the stories. I'm not going to go into them. But it was a great story and I really enjoyed it. And the conversation she created before and after the story as well was was very interesting. Um, who else for me? Um, Jan Blake. I thought she was great. Uh, very polished storyteller and um who else oh shona lee we both really enjoyed shona lee yeah she she really brought a kind of uh cultural perspective uh to her stories that was really rewarding and sat in sitting in that um so the, the classicist in me was annoyed that it was called the amphitheater because it's not an amphitheater amphitheater is double-ended it's a theater it's a classical theatre, um, but it's a beautiful space with great acoustics, and it felt, I don't know, I just, it was that, listening to Shona Lee talk about her stories of of kind of the, the Jewish culture, and um, it, it was, it felt right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, and then we had our fire pit experience. We had our first uh, live performance, right? Yeah, so we've been telling stories for ourselves, really, for for a while now. And the moment came here for us to tell a story for the first time around the fire pit. And it was very intimate. There were just sort of a few, you know, handful of people there, uh, which is probably a good thing for our first time. (laughs) Yeah, and we weren't the first ones to, to tell our stories. No. I, don't, I don't remember the names of uh, 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 well, the Norman told the story, and there were two two other women that told stories, um, and then Simona told a story as well, she did. Uh, which would be this guy being chased by a tiger. Uh, <laughs> it was so funny. Um, really enjoyed that too. 
So, yeah, yeah. I mean, f f for me, the Oxfordshire Storytelling Festival was a great discovery um, of a, a, a little world that I didn't truly yeah. know existed. Yeah. And um, a really lovely collection of people who happen to all be into the thing that I'm really into. So, I mean, yeah. I had just... <laughs> shall we, shall we put a name to what we're into? I don't think we mentioned what it is. Improvised storytelling. Yes. Yeah. Um, and we will be there next year um, doing our thing. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I can't wait. And I'm, it's, it's, I already know it's going to feel like coming home when we go, because that's sort of almost where we found ourselves as performers. So here we are at the second part uh, of the podcast. The first question uh, I asked uh, David to answer was uh, if he had uh, a favorite performance uh, or a favorite workshop he went to. And this was his answer. One of the favorite workshops I went to was with Ashley Ramsden. It was a Hodja workshop. So Nasruddin Hodja stories were being shared, exchanged. And the exciting thing for me about it was the rediscovery, I suppose, of the, all the different possible in, of uh, interpretations but how the interpretations developed and the understanding of the story developed by hearing the multifaceted responses of different people in the group. And there was a very light touch from Ashley about the way he led the workshop. It was very improvised. I thought he must have run it so many times before, but I was so surprised to talk to him later and find out that actually he hadn't run that workshop before but he was so comfortable with Hodger because he's kind of very knowledgeable about Hodger's story. So it was great. That was, that was a special moment. And I loved the, uh, some of the exercises, for example, gazing into the eyes of another participant and saying, you know, what's it like being me? It was absolutely fascinating. I really enjoyed uh, the Nasruddin Hodja workshop uh, as well. But uh, if I have to choose uh, one performance in the whole storytelling festival, which is very, very difficult uh, because there were just amazing performances by different uh, storytellers uh, and different kinds of storytellers. Well, if I have to choose one, uh, I would choose uh, John Blake's performance on Friday night, the first night of the festival. It was just amazing and uh, she was there with her drummer and just the, well, the, the compendium of music and story and words and uh, her ability to keep you mesmerized from the beginning to the end of the story. It was just incredible. And uh, I had seen many videos of her telling stories, uh, but seeing, uh, watching her telling a story, listening to her tell a story there, live, uh, it was just an amazing experience. And if I had to choose uh, a workshop uh, I went to, it was not a storytelling workshop, but uh, it relates uh, uh, to storytelling and uh, also to John Blake because uh, on uh, Sunday of the festival, the last day, just before the, um, the final, uh, the ending ceremony, well, I went to a djembe workshop and uh, I played the djembe with uh, so many other people there. And it was just amazing. I kept smiling and... Uh, I couldn't stop smiling and my hand, I remember my hands hurt, uh, but it was just so wonderful to be there and play the djembe all together. And none of, that, none of us had played the djembe, the djembe before, which was just amazing. And uh, well, you might have heard me play the djembe before in another episode. 
now I'm trying to learn to play the djembe. And so the second question uh, I asked David uh, was uh, if he could tell me something about uh, a favorite moment of his uh, at the festival or a moment that would stay with him. And this is his answer. A favorite moment from the festival was early in the morning with you, Simona, and my good old friend, Matthew Harrington, standing under the silver birch tree early in the morning, on the morning after the festival was supposed to have finished. You and Matt hadn't been able to join me for the work, for my um, uh, Sensing Tree Spirits workshop the day before, so I, we ran a I did, I did, I, we did the workshop together early in the morning of the Monday. That was really beautiful. Um, it felt like a, we had stepped out of time. And the intensity of the weekend had diminished and we were just uh, being there together. I thought that was a special, special experience. It was cool. It was slightly damp. There was birdsong and stillness and I felt very connected with you and with the tree and nature. And what to say, that was one of my favorite moments as well. Just waking up early in the morning when people were leaving or had already left and uh, there was nobody around, just the, the three of us uh, and a couple more people. And uh, we went to the, um, to the garden and we, we did the workshop that I couldn't attend the day before. And it was just amazing, so calm and relaxed. Just a wonderful moment. It's not possible to express it in words. So... I'm going to talk about uh, something a bit different, uh, uh, another favorite moment of mine. So actually not a favorite moment, uh, but two of them, because uh, um, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, the experience of telling stories uh, at the Oxford Storytelling Festival. I wasn't one of the artists that was invited to the festival, but uh, during the festival there was the chance uh, to tell stories uh, at a um, story circle. And uh, that was one of my favorite moments because uh, uh, the story circles uh, I went to were in the evenings of the Saturday and Sunday and the Sunday one was my favorite one because it was just after the ending ceremony and uh, everybody had uh, gone home or was uh, partying at the silent disco. So, well, just normal people sharing stories uh, there in a circle. It was just amazing after the professional storytellers uh, listening to people who were not telling stories uh, because uh, the, they, it was their job to do so, but because they love telling stories and just being there, relaxed. Uh, and uh, I told two stories. I'm, I'm really shy um, when it comes to being in front of people I don't know um, and speaking <laughs> and doing something like that when I haven't rehearsed anything. But it was such a relaxed atmosphere that uh, I told two stories uh, and I enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoyed it thoroughly. And then I had another experience uh, of telling uh, a story and it wasn't at a story circle, but uh, it was uh, at an organized event, uh, a scheduled event uh, in the in the festival. And uh, because uh, the story collective uh, David was part of uh, should have told stories uh, uh, about uh, nature, 
but somehow there was a big performance uh, at the amphitheater and <laughs> I don't know, it uh, was somehow forgotten. And so um, at the light of a flashlight, David and uh, a couple more people told stories uh, about nature and since uh, there were just a few of us listening, it was such a relaxed atmosphere and David looked at me and asked me, would you like to tell a story? And it was like, oh, no, I have a story I can tell, but am I really going to do it? And in the end, I took a deep breath and I did it. And it was an amazing experience, like telling a story outside of the classroom just for the pleasure to tell a story and live it was uh, at the Oxford Storytelling Festival where it was the first time for me doing something like that so it was just incredible and uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to doing it again I also asked David uh, about uh, a conversation that he had uh, at the festival and maybe something insightful or something meaningful for him. I had a lovely conversation again on the Monday with a friend of the daughter of Peter Hamilton, a man who, um, a man who was very instrumental in me becoming a storyteller, who passed away a week before, just a few days before the festival began literally two days before the festival began. Peter Hamilton was hugely influential. And I bumped into uh, a woman while we were packing up, um, who's a very, very good friend of Joe Hamilton. Um, and we talked about Joe, we talked about Peter, and I told her a story. And it turned out that the story I told her, which involved a a fiddler very close to her heart because she herself is a fiddler and her name is Jackie. Well from my part I loved all the small conversations I had uh, at the Oxford Storytelling Festival and uh, one thing they like to share it was not really a conversation it was part of an exercise it's not what you could define a conversation we weren't really exchanging any real information there was not uh, an answer to what the other person was saying so it's not what you could define as a conversation but uh, one thing that I vividly remember um, from the festival was uh, the conversation, if we want to call it like that, with uh, my partner during the Nasruddin Hoja workshop because we had to do this exercise where we were in pairs and we looked into each other's eyes and uh, we had to say some sentences uh, and one of us uh, said it uh, and then the other one said it uh, and so on and so forth about always looking, uh, gazing into each other's eyes. And uh, at one point uh, we also had to say to each other what we thought uh, being the other person uh, would be like. So without knowing each other we had to gaze into the eyes of the other person and tell them being you is blah 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 and uh, it was uh, this exchange really really struck me because uh, what uh, my partner Fiona if I remember correctly told about me is uh, exactly what I hope people think of me. 
So it was just incredible to to see that uh, she perceived me as something uh, as I wanted to be perceived. And uh, and then I remember her eyes uh, and the movements uh, of her eyes and of her face uh, while I was telling her things about her, I imagined about her, and uh, she was telling me things. And uh, it was really, really deep, a deep connection. And uh, something else I asked David uh, to comment about uh, was uh, the contact with nature because uh, the Oxford Storytelling Festival completely revolved uh, around uh, nature and being uh, in contact with nature. So I asked him what his opinion about that was. The main learning thing for me at the festival was focusing on connection with nature. That was the theme that the group of storytellers, the collective from the Society of Storytelling had chosen, breathing the land. And for me to pay attention to the land, to listen to the land, to go to workshops with people like Lisa Schneider and look at how we can bring nature into our own storytelling, really connect with all aspects of nature in a very sensory way was my main learning um, from the weekend. The setting was just fantastic. And uh, Water Perry House and Gardens, uh, it's just a very nice place. uh, And uh, you can walk in the gardens uh, and uh, look at uh, many different species of plants uh, and trees. uh, and flowers, uh, it, it was wonderful. And then my big contact with nature was just uh, sitting under these huge trees, uh, um, which I think were um, redwood. And uh, it was just incredible. And the last thing I asked David uh, to tell me about were final comments about the festival and uh, here is what he said it was a beautiful festival and wonderful to meet you in person for the first time after these couple of years since we met uh, through online workshops and that wasn't only true for you Simona I met several people like Norman Perrin who I've got to know very well through the World Storytelling Cafe, and that, and who was also involved, like you, in the project around the world in 88 Tales. So meeting people in person that I got to know online was really special. Well, meeting people was my favourite part as well. Well, uh, of course, I met David, uh, and uh, I met Norman, I met Janet Crouch, uh, who I had only only met online at the War Storytelling Cafe. And uh, I remember having a really wonderful moment with uh, Janet because um, she came to the Jembe workshop as well. And we were sitting next to each other and we were just looking at each other from time to time and laughing. <laughs> and she would... would who would tell me, oh, you you can do this. Uh, I'm old. Uh, this is difficult for me. And it was like, oh, no, Janet, you can do it. Come on, let's do it. Let's play together. And it was really fun and a really wonderful moment. Like having this kind of moment with people you only met online. And though you feel like they, they were your friends forever. And uh, it was just amazing. And then, well, making new friends like Matt and David, uh, who you've listened to before. It was just uh, an amazing experience. And also, my final shout out uh, would be to something uh, that was not related to storytelling, but would go to the stalls uh, of local craftsmen. 
and uh, because I spent uh, an hour probably or two I don't even remember time went by so quickly while I was there I spent some time working uh, greenwood uh, and making uh, a spurtle from uh, a piece of wood it was just amazing and so here were our thoughts about the Oxford Storytelling Festival, my first storytelling festival, an amazing experience that uh, I'd like to repeat very soon. And that's all for today. Thank you very much for listening and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye!